Thank you very much for the invitation to um, uh, <clears throat> have me talk about uh, molecular graphics. So I'm an associate professor in the Department of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology at OUHSC. And um, I'm involved in structural biology. We use this program called PyMol to visualize structures. Obviously, it's uh, based on Python. So this is some examples of structures that we have determined in our laboratory um, at OUHSC. And uh, so on the left are several uh, protein structures. They're represented as ribbon diagrams. These images were made with PyMol. And on the right are some uh, uh, van der Waals sphere structures of uh, several RNAs determined in our lab. Um, <clears throat> so the goal of determining these structures is ultimately uh, drug development for the purpose of uh, treating various diseases. We're, right now we're working on a uh, protein kinase with a collaborator that's involved in leukemia. And um, so this is a ribbon diagram made as a black and white cartoon in PyMol. And then uh, this next image will show a drug bound. Uh, the green mesh around the drug molecule in the middle is, uh, was made with a, um, a, the observed electron density. And then some of the residues of the protein just shown on the last slide. By residues, I mean these uh, amino acid side chains that are interacting with the drug molecule. They're um, enclosed in uh, electron density with a blue color. And so this is uh, why we do this work and to visualize the uh, structures of the molecules that uh, we determine, um, we use uh, PyMol. As, um, and why do we use PyMol? Um, it's real, very popular uh, amongst uh, protein crystallographers and also amongst people involved in molecular modeling. So this shows um, a, uh, the results of a poll of uh, uh, percent uh, amongst about uh, 2,500 users, and um, uh, it shows a ranking of, the, of some leading uh, molecular graphics programs. So PyMol comes out on top with 38 uh, percent, and uh, this poll was initiated back in uh, 2009, and at that time uh, PyMol, uh, PyMol also came out on top. So it's holding its own uh, over the past uh, decade now. So uh, PyMol is popular because it's easy to generate a global uh, view of a molecule that is a publication quality. It's also easy, relatively easy to make molecular movies. And, uh, but we often have to make figures that are uh, more detailed, and then that requires often the use of uh, scripts. And then that's where it becomes more difficult, and that's where uh, a lot of new users uh, have trouble. So um, these are some of the pros. It has, uh, there's a number of tutorials available on uh, YouTube. In five minutes, you can learn the you know, basics of getting a molecule into the viewport. Um, I am showing these uh, images, these slides, in the viewport of PyMol, actually, right now. Um, so PyMol has a, um, a viewport where the molecules is displayed. It has an internal GUI on the right side, and you can use this to turn on and off objects. So everything that's read in to PyMol is treated as a separate object, and then there, each object has uh, pull-down menus where you can uh, do various things. You can change the, uh, how it's displayed and so forth. Then at the top is a, um, what's known as an external GUI because in some versions it uh, can be detached. And it has a command history window that you can uh, copy uh, commands out of and, uh, and paste onto a command line. And so this allows uh, the recycling of snippets of code uh, you know, very easily. And um, it also has a second command line at the bottom, which doesn't allow um, the uh, pasting of commands. 
And uh, the viewport actually will also display the command history window. Um, it, it, you just hit escape to toggle back and forth. Then there's uh, a number of pull downs across the top for simple things like opening up files and also for um, plugins. So uh, Pymol has, um, was designed for the display of images for the purpose of uh, preparing figures for publication in uh, science uh, uh, journals. And in particular, it's been very popular for the making of images for uh, cover figures. And, uh, so, and so it's uh, many of the figures on the cover of Science, Nature, and Cell uh, uh, have been made with Pymol. But other people, because they spend so much time in Pymol, have wanted to do further analyses of the structures and uh, going beyond just simple figure making so they have uh, developed uh, plugins that can be added on uh, as the user chooses. So um, Pymol ha has a wiki site that has uh, 536 pages. So it's very, the uh, documentation online is very extensive. It helps to make it uh, relatively easy to use. <clears throat> There's a large and helpful user community uh, mailing list that's a pretty active, usually a, a several posts a day. And um, as you've seen, uh, there are plugins, but you can also extend uh, Pymol with scripts. And uh, that's what I've done uh, here. I have developed a startup script that has um, little shortcuts or aliases mapped to uh, functions that I have found convenient and that I uh, have found that others find convenient too. Um, and this can help. Uh, uh, make people more productive with uh, Pymol. So I've been uh, working on training students in the use of Pymol for 10 years at OUHSC. So we, we have uh, first year students in a molecular systems course in the fall semester. They have essentially no experience with computers uh, and very low understanding of molecular structure and uh, um, I spend uh, nine hours uh, training them, uh, five hours on the use of uh, Pymol. Um, and then in a physical biochemistry course that we offer in the second uh, year, they um, get a chance to refresh in their skills and go deeper and they actually use Pymol to make in-class presentations. So they'll make a number of images and uh, display those in a uh, 20 minute presentation. Then we uh, designed and put together this 15-hour uh, course on molecular graphics where we cover uh, many of the uh, more advanced analysis methods beyond just making uh, figures. And then this past spring, we offered a course in structure-based drug design uh, and, uh, um, in order to, to help uh, build up the, our uh, expertise in that area on the, at OUHSC. I have, uh, published a paper on uh, using uh, um, short uh, uh, code fragments to try to enhance the use of Pymol for uh, both students and researchers. And um, I have, uh, I've been working over the past couple years trying to extend this further. So I'm here because um, I thought this audience is who are involved in developing software for users of all kinds might have some useful suggestions. I'm not, I have, uh, my training in uh, computer science is very minimal. One course in BASIC in the 1980s, one course in Fortran in the 1990s, that's it. I started using Py Python as a result of having to teach uh, Pymol and trying to go beyond just using the GUI. And uh, um, so um, I actually, when I was assigned the task of teaching uh, Pymol, I had very little experience with Pymol, and I had to <laughs> learn quickly. Um, so here are some examples of some electrographic graphic images. Some are pretty simple, like this one below, although you can see there's uh, selections have been made of certain groups that are uh, that have uh, been uh, colored differently, so this probably required the use of a script to make those specifications. At the, in the upper left, this figure definitely required the use of uh, scripts. Um, 
This is a, an image of a uh, protein. There's two copies of it. And it's enclosed in a uh, Sachs envelope, a low resolution molecular envelope. Uh, Sachs is a technique in which you can attain the overall shape of a protein without crystals. You can um, get this from the protein when it's free in solution. And so you get like a 12 to 20 angstrom resolution a molecular envelope shown in gray. And then uh, this is another student who has, actually two students who have uh, 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 made a number of molecular graphics for their master's theses. Uh, these other students were uh, PhD students. So these are some examples of uh, students actually applying this uh, knowledge from their courses in their research. I did not help any of these students with these figures. They did it, this uh, entirely on their own. So that, the average PyMol um, user uses PyMol infrequently, so their memory of where, what uh, commands are available through the pull-downs and the GUI fades quite quickly. Um, they also don't remember uh, the commands on the command line easily. Uh, that, that knowledge fades after a few weeks of not using PyMol. Most uh, um, users don't have any formal training in uh, computing. They, at best, maybe had one course in Java or something like that as a you know, requirement for their undergraduate degree. Um, they generally underestimate the amount of time required to do the, the task of making a figure. They think, wow, that looks really easy to make. Should have, you know, you're using a computer, probably only took minutes. And uh, maybe at the end of the day, they <laughs> uh, change their opinion. So it's not unusual to have to spend hours and up to a day to make a uh, publication quality image. Um, they often uh, overestimate what they can accomplish by just using the GUI and, and pull downs and trying to make uh, selections using the mouse um, and uh, uh, rather than using a script. And uh, of course, there's this great fear about using scripts and uh, using the command line. Um, they, uh, the users, and I'm, I'm speaking from my own experience and what I've observed in students, we uh, generally learn by example, pretty much the monkey see, monkey do method. Since we don't understand the command syntax very well, uh, we, um, and, and we're unwilling to invest the time in learning it, to learn it, um, the monkey see, monkey do approach is most effective. Um, in addition, most users arrive with no uh, previous experience with Python, and, um, and then they also have a very poor knowledge of the names of the different atom types. So a side chain that has three different uh, carbon atoms in it, they'll be named C alpha, C beta, C gamma, uh, gamma or, and then labeled uh, C A, C B, and uh, C G. And they um, generally are not familiar with that, so that uh, makes their tasks more difficult. And then they often don't uh, understand protein structure that well. Nor do they have any knowledge of, they have low knowledge of Unix commands like present working directory, you know, PWD, simple things like that, which uh, work on the command line within PyMol. But they don't have any knowledge of how the read line commands can you know, cause the cursor to move around quickly and help uh, facilitate the use of the command line. So in uh, my teaching, I try to uh, introduce uh, those features and to improve their uh, skills. So um, most of the students that we have will not use PyMol in, prepare, in doing work on their dissertation, but they will use other computer programs. Many of them will have to use R to do some analyses of bioinformatics data. And so the experience they get using PyMol and the command line it, uh, transfers a little bit to other scientific software. So these are some of the disadvantages of uh, trying to work without scripts. You can uh, bring up a figure and um, ah. so, so I'm not hooked up to the internet probably. Um,
so I've, I've just loaded a uh, structure from the directory. And um, so you can use the mouse. A three-fingered mouse is an essential tool with this program. Um, so that, that's, uh, most students don't have three-fingered mice, uh, and so they have to run out to Walmart and spend $10 on one. And, uh, but um, that, um, this is used to uh, rotate the molecule. You can translate it and uh, zoom in and out. And uh, then you can control the slab thickness. Um, you can also um, get uh, display different kinds of representations very easily. So let's see, we, we have, uh, say, show spheres. Um, all through the uh, GUI, and um, but uh, using this requires the use of the mouse, perhaps for hours on end, and uh, that's not great if you have if you're sensitive to uh, or you're developing carpal tunnel syndrome. So you can also do the same operations using the command line, and uh, that can uh, is, is more uh, um, hygienic, I guess. Um, so you're less likely to suffer uh, damage from repetitive motions. So you can uh, uh, save this work as a session file. If you're trying to get away with not using scripts, these uh, session files, however, are binary files. You can, after they're saved, you can double click on them, PyMole will pop open, and you'll get back exactly the same object in the same orientation that you had before. So that, that's the wonderful thing about them. The ho horrible thing about them is they're not very uh, transferable to other computers. You can send uh, a, a PSE file to a colleague who has the same kind of computer, same operating system, and it won't be read in. Um, so for whatever reason, there's these uh, huge compatibility issues, and they are very large files. They're binary files, so they're hard to put under um, uh, version control. Okay, let's see. So that's where scripts come in in place of uh, the use of uh, like session files to save work. So scripts allow you to regenerate an image at a later time, you can have exactly the same view. Uh, there's ways of controlling, uh, you can set the orientation of the molecule. And then the scripts are small. They're just in plain text files. They're easy to attach to email. And, and so they're uh, easy to transfer. Um, and obviously, you can put these under version control. And uh, while working on the script, uh, you can uh, get away from uh, using the mouse so much. So um, the disadvantages of the scripts are that the, the documentation that's built into PyMol often lacks uh, examples. And so you have to, then the user has to break away from PyMol, open up a browser, and go to um, the PyMol wiki site. And um, so I, I wrote a shortcut that actually does that. It sends a search term to the PyMol wiki site, and it'll go through the 536 pages, find the right one and open up that page uh, with the, um, that, that you need, and, and those pages have examples. Um, and the other problem is uh, old scripts can be hard to find. I you know, have this problem um, of recovering scripts. I can spend half an hour, hour trying to find a script. So um, by having uh, uh, chunks of code from uh, pro past proje projects embedded in the startup script, that code is always available. Um, so, for example, this uh, T4L is a shortcut. Let's see, it's not working. To um, Um, to a, a series of uh, 
uh, commands that generate this image. So this is T4 lysozyme. It's been oriented a specific way. This is not the default orientation. It's been colored by secondary structure element. And um, so to see that code, if I wanted to apply it to a different molecule, I would just type help and then on uh, T4L and I will get um, the PyMol scripting language code uh, displayed here. So these, um, there's, you can talk to PyMol through uh, the GUI, you can talk to PyMol through these uh, commands and um, which are, you have one command per line, you can um, have compound commands where you have a command separate that ends with a semicolon and then you have multiple commands on one line and uh, so that um, those commands are relatively easy to edit on the uh, in the external GUI on this uh, command line at the top so with uh, uh, multiple commands uh, separated by semicolons, you, you can have uh, a vast number of uh, commands on one line, and then you hit enter to execute, and then uh, you would hit uh, the up arrow key to pull back the command if you need to edit it. So you, this is great for editing small chunks of code, as when you're building up a complex script, you can very rapidly uh, modify the commands in an interactive fashion without having to um, switch back and forth between a um, PyMol and a script editor, and, and, and you can avoid uh, the step of loading up a script over and over again. So the other uh, problem, that uh, challenge that we face with students and colleagues is the fear of the command line represented by the mouse, and uh, this is an elephant. And uh, so this fear of the command line, as you know, is very irrational, um, or seems very irrational to us, but it's based on bad experiences that people have had with the command line. They try to get in, um, you know, they, they um, try to do some operation, doesn't go as they expected. And, and this is just a consequence of a lack of training. And um, so, my hope is by uh, introducing uh, students and colleagues to these shortcuts in PyMol that can do a lot of things quickly, uh, they will appreciate the power of the command line and then uh, start to go further with it. So, um, for example, we have this uh, uh, display of T4 lysosome. If we want to represent this as a ambient occlusion uh, diagram, we uh, just, there's a shortcut called AO for ambient occlusion, and uh, this conversion will be, uh, take place. Um, this is not a molecular representation available within PyMol. You can't get this kind of display by selection through the pull down. We have as a ray traced image, if I, I'll mess it up once I uh, try to move the object with the mouse. Um, so. You can see that this is a beautiful image. Um, we have the Van der Waals surface colored by atom type. We have a wonderful shading that gives a 3D perspective. And uh, then that's, of course, lost when I click on it. But I can use up arrow key and get that back. And this is, involves about 20 lines of code. Um, and uh, so this is by having this available th through the startup script, which is always read in whenever PyMol started, uh, all you have to remember is uh, actually SA, um, that gives a list of the uh, aliases or shortcuts. So these are the names of them in uh, different categories. And so the user doesn't have to remember anything other than SA to uh, get a listing of the commands. Okay, so um, these are sort of the guidelines I've been trying to follow in uh, trying to make uh, PyMol easier to use. 
Um, and uh, so these are, I'm sure, familiar uh, ideas to try to avoid uh, the fingers leaving the keyboard to use the mouse. So you know, whenever you do that, that sort of breaks your concentration. And uh, also, I selected the names of shortcuts. Um, so um, in, in PyMol, they, they have a command called alias in the PyMol scripting language. And uh, that maps a, a short phrase to a series of commands. Um, but I've also developed, but, but there isn't uh, any way of providing documentation with that alias. So I've gone on and used, uh, rewrote those same aliases as Python functions, which then makes available the ability to print out a document uh, string, a doc string that describes uh, um, how to use the, fun uh, the uh, alias and uh, gives examples of using the alias, as well as prints out the commands so somebody could uh, reuse the alias easily or reuse the function easily. So these functions, I'm calling shortcuts. And um, so um, maybe I've been trying to avoid the use of special characters in the names of the shortcuts so that uh, the fingers don't have to leave the home keys. And um, I also have uh, um, uh, examples in all of the uh, doc strings because uh, examples are essential for the users, m most users of PyMol. So um, these are sort of the, the different uh, approaches that I found help make the use of PyMol easier. Uh, the use of compound commands I've talked about, use of read line commands to make navigation on the command line easier. Uh, and then uh, PyMol had this uh, settings of a molecule um, that's quite awkward. They, uh, um, you enter this command, uh, get view, to get the orientation matrix, which is uh, displayed down here. And um, for our molecules, which are determined with a coordinate uncertainty of a tenth of an angstrom, all this precision is extreme overkill. And uh, so I came up with an alternative command called uh, round view, or RV. And uh, now we've taken that mess that was on multiple lines. It's hard to copy and paste accurately. Um, it's hard to put that, this, uh, the, the matrix above on a, um, a uh, 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 on the, you can't paste it easily on the command line without a lot of editing. And so it's hard to reuse in a uh, horizontal script. But this command below, it, um, in this reformatted version is much easier to work with. So um, I initially started out making um, things like these uh, new molecular representations, the ambient occlusion effect that you just saw uh, demonstrated, which can be applied to any molecule that's loaded up. Uh, so I have a series of those, and um, I also developed um, uh, just representative images of molecules in um, standard orientations, as well as complex images, where one may want to, uh, <clears throat> which, which require a lot of code to make. And so here's an example. Uh, the black dashed lines represent hydrogen bonds, and these had to be specified. You have to specify the each atom involved in the hydrogen bonding. This is a piece of RNA. Um, the heavy line represents the backbone. So we have a cartoon that was uh, has messed up this image by default. Um, anyways, uh, let's see if I can hide. Uh, this is something what the original structure looked like, except the sphere was uh, of a, a smaller radius. But, but anyways, all these uh, hydrogen bonds, are, they're difficult to identify accurately using algorithms. And uh, um, so by default, the ones that, uh, Python doesn't identify hydrogen bonds, just identifies non-bonding interactions. And the user has to go through and sort out which ones are hydrogen bonds, which ones um, are just uh, close contacts. and uh, so once you whittle down that list, uh, you can uh, uh, come up with the hydrogen bonds. 
and represent them as uh, dashed lines. And so each hydrogen bond is shown here as a separate molecular object. So we can turn these on and off. We can change the color of them. And uh, so that you can uh, give them different uh, names so that each of them is uniquely identified. And uh, so the code for that is not easy to remember, at least not for me. So um, by uh, just typing help in the name, I have uh, distance uh, H bond and then the syntax for uh, labeling the hydrogen bond uh, acceptor and the hydrogen bond donor. And, and so it's very much easier for me to make a new script by copying and pasting this code as so readily accessible. So obviously I need to find a uh, command that will clear out everything <laughs> without having to restart. Um, okay. So uh, one of the ambient occlusion, another uh, uh, kind of cool representation is um, uh, this black and white cartoon. So. Uh, this is not available in PyMold as a uh, default representation. It requires a number of commands, and um, I, th I think what's more impressive is with the T4 lysozyme. So I'll bring that up. Um, so these uh, black and white images, uh, they could be used to make logos uh, for an organization. They could be used in a uh, to assemble a coloring book to give out to relatives at Christmas time, try to recruit uh, you know, young people to science. And um, or they could be used for exams where you, that you give in class where you can't afford to print out uh, exams in color, but you can do this in uh, black and white. So um, I, I forgot to get hooked up to the internet in advance, but um, I've come up with a number of uh, shortcuts that um, use uh, the web browser module in Python to open up a browser and, and send search terms to a particular site. So for example, Google. Google. You can, uh, so that's represented by geo is, is a shortcut for it. And you can have uh, multiple search terms, of course, multiple commands on uh, the command line uh, set up so you could think about uh, the search you want to do instead of searching for the first term. And then uh, when you're ready, you could hit enter, and then separate tabs will open up in your default web browser, and all those searches will be done in parallel. And then when you're ready to look at the pages, you can go look at them. So that, that saves some time. And then uh, having this uh, shortcut to uh, the PyMole wiki to get examples is valuable. Having a shortcut to um, the Protein Data Bank. The Protein Data Bank has a separate web page for every single entry. There's uh, 120,000 protein structures in the Protein Data Bank, so 120,000 web pages. You can go to the specific web page right away without having to go to the home page and searching uh, more indirectly. Um, so I have one for the National Weather Service, which is really their radar. Um, so you can check on the weather, determine how far away the uh, oncoming tornado may be in the springtime, yeah. and so various things like that. I have one also for opening up uh, webmail and, and, and uh, Gmail and so forth. So a person could do a lot while remaining within PyMole without having to change their the context of their work. And then I have some convenience functions. So uh, in PyMole, when one saves a session file, as I described earlier, um, uh, one winds, winds up overriding any existing uh, session file. There uh, isn't any built-in version control. So I put in a, um, a, I developed a function that writes the timestamp down to the nearest second in the file name. And that way you can distinguish between the different versions and, and, and keep them and save uh, previous versions. 
um, have a function that displays a symmetry mates, uh, taking advantage of a um, software that somebody else developed, but uh, in or orient uh, in a simpler form, so the user doesn't have to uh, spend a lot of time going through the documentation. They they probably want uh, two unit cells of the crystal, uh, um, an array, a two by two array is commonly what's uh, desired, and uh, so they can skip figuring out the syntax or the special script to get this figure generated. It can just go with this uh, default, very commonly desired uh, uh, representation. So these boxes are the basic unit cell of a, a protein crystal, and there's a total of eight uh, boxes that uh, build up the crystal by uh, translation. And um, we're looking down the unique axis and, uh, 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 or you know, one, one particular axis of uh, uh, that builds up this crystal. So some other things that uh, I've developed include um, sending a um, molecular surface. Uh, so that, that's one kind of representation that's possible. Oh yeah. So now I have all these uh, copies. So I developed uh, another uh, function that removes them and, and easily. Other, in the past, people would have to just uh, turn off or if they knew enough, they could go to the command line and specify or use wildcards to remove those other objects. Um, and then uh, this command ms to pdf, it requires the generation of a molecular surface. So this is um, taking the van der Waals surface, rolling a ball across that surface, and wherever the ball makes contacts, you uh, get, uh, that, that defines the surface. So that gives you um, insight into what parts of the protein are accessible to uh, substrate molecules or ligands of various types. And um, then doing this uh, MS2 to PDF, you can send this molecular surface through four programs that are outside of PyMol, and then a PDF file will pop open with a 3D PDF representation of the molecule ready to go. And, um, so I, uh, I broke that uh, chain <laughs> recently, but uh, that, that's uh, very useful. Um, the use of uh, the ability to make 3D PDFs has uh, been a challenge, um, and it's not as widely used as it could be. And then, obviously, uh, another thing that you would probably think of, uh, okay, you've got all these uh, chunks of code in the startup script that are readily available. Would have, uh, but in terms of using a text editor, one thinks of having those chunks in a snippet library. And surprisingly, nobody's developed a snippet library yet for PyMol. So uh, I've been working on that. But, but I have students who have all kinds of computing platforms, and uh, we don't buy them computers. They, they have to buy their own. And uh, they also have different preferences for text editors. So I've been developing uh, a snippet library, a snippet library that can then be exported to different file formats. For di uh, the formats for different uh, snippet libraries for, diff for these uh, different uh, uh, text editors. So students like these simple text editors. And then you have, of course, some more sophisticated text editors that are more intimidating to uh, people from outside of computing, but are much more powerful. And then you have the other text editors, the uh, ones that take a lifetime to learn, that require uh, muscle memory, and but but are even much more effective. So I, I've been able to uh, learn a lot about text editors doing this. Um, so these are the different uh, uh, editors, and. My future directions involve uh, trying to make uh, shortcuts to standard analyses that are um, done by outside programs that I have to do you know, uh, fairly often. And it, it can take, like yesterday I had to do this. I had to uh, analyze an RNA double helix uh, by running an external program and then plot the output of that program in new plot to make a publication quality figure. I spent six hours doing that 
you know, first I had to like up install the newest version of the programs and so forth, but, but I also had to dig through my notes and recover uh, the command line syntax and so forth. If I had that stored in a, a script within PyMall, I would have saved myself possibly six hours. Um, and then the other, um, it would be nice to have shortcuts for making plots of various kinds of data from these uh, molecules using new plot R, matplotlib, and uh, Python. Um, some of the plugins that do this already for sp uh, the specific analyses involving those plugins. And then another feature that would be uh, nice for advanced users was, would be to have ripples for R, Julia, Octave, new plot, and so on. And then ultimately, um, as a user of LaTeX, I think it would be cool to be able to talk from LaTeX to PyMol and get back images um, that could be embedded in, in a LaTeX document. So literate programming with uh, PyMol. So uh, there's a picture that includes some people from my lab. And um, I have, uh, uh, I, there's, uh, uh, William Beasley at OUHSC is a bioinformaticist who have, um, has helped me out uh, fill in a lot of uh, uh, gaps in my background knowledge. Corey Giles is at OMRF. Uh, he was a graduate student in our department who uh, worked with Jonathan Wren in a bioinformatics lab, and we, he's uh, helped advance my knowledge of Python. And then uh, Chi Kanyumbu was a technician in my lab who was uh, very excited by these uh, shortcuts and uh, helped uh, with uh, proofing them. And then I've 250 graduate students over the past uh, 10 years have helped me refine how I present this material and helped me identify problems with PyMol and uh, how to try to make PyMol easier to use. I'm not funded to do this work, but I'm, I'm funded to do other things, but um, these are agencies and grants. Uh, 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 pay my bills while working on this on the side. Have any questions? Any suggestions as to um, what, what I'm missing or what people commonly think of? Yes, you can. So uh, PyMol has this complicated uh, arrangement. The um, latest version of PyMol is proprietary, but the older versions are available uh, on um, SorgeForge. And uh, so the penultimate version can be uh, downloaded from there. On a Mac, it's hard to install. I suggest uh, using Mac ports. It's available in Mac, Mac port, so you, you, you'll get like the penultimate version of PyMol installed using uh, Pac, uh, Mac ports. Um, I think home, it has been available through Homebrew at times. And, um, and, th and then for Windows computers, um, there's uh, somebody at UCLA has put together, um, uh, let's see what they're called these uh, installers for uh, wheel uh, um, files for PyMol. So you select uh, you know, what kind of machine you have, 32-bit, 64-bit, then the type of Py what version of Python you have installed. So you have to have Python installed and pip installed, and then you can use the wheel file to install uh, PyMol. So it's, pr it's pretty easy. And, uh, and you can get the penultimate version. The ver three versions on average come out a year, about once every four months. And the difference between the, the versions are not that great in terms of the features that are available. So right now, what I have here is version, uh, I think, 2.1, but version 1.7 has 99% of the features in version 2.1. So the person who developed this program by version 0.99, by that version, he had, you know, 95% of what's available in PyMol worked out. Right. So, um, 
the proprietary software involves a license that lasts a year, and that the license for an individual costs $99. So um, I, um, our department bought a license for, to, um, for me, uh, for the purposes of teaching, that cost $350 so that I, so the students in my class could use the installers. We did that uh, this past year because it, there's an educational version of Pymol that's available, but I recommend avoiding it. It has a lot of features that are crippled to encourage you to use the proprietary version, although they say nothing about the open source version. There's a, the Pymol wiki page has um, three pages for, uh, that describe how to install open source Pymol on Windows, Mac, and Linux. And, and uh, so I recommend going there to get advice. Right, right. Yeah, a few sort of So you can, uh, in PyMold, make the stereo views that you're describing, and you can um, also make anaglyph stereo views. So if you have the red uh, cyan glasses, you can view uh, structures in 3D um, in an interactive session. Oh, most definitely. So this can be used with any molecules. All you need, all the raw data are just the X, Y, Z coordinates of each atom. That's it. It's very simple. So it can read in about uh, 50 different file types. So atomic coordinates come in all kinds of different uh, <laughs> formats, as you know. And uh, so it's not just restricted to proteins and, and PDB files. So I, we've are uh, hitting our time limit. Okay.